Hello everyone and welcome to the conclusion of the A7R3 fail. Uh, I got the camera back, it's right here, and uh, I definitely know it's mine and they didn't like replace it with a different camera, although I did have to redo the entire firmware. I guess every time you send it in they just reboot your firmware completely. But uh, my Sony logo is blacked out here and on the sides, so I definitely know it's mine and the serial number matches, so yeah, definitely mine. Anyway, before I get into what they discovered, I almost feel like today is sponsored, but it's really not. It's Portrait Pro. How to make your grandmother look like a hooker with Portrait Pro, because every time I do anything on the internet today, that ad is in my face, and I don't know why. I got the camera back. Sony sent it back to me in a box. Lots of bubble wrap. It was very well protected. The thing that was kind of frustrating about getting the camera back was they sent it back to me, but they didn't tell me that they were sending it back to me. So luckily, the other day uh, I had an early morning photo shoot, went and did that shoot, realized I forgot my wallet, had to come home, and uh, sure enough, the camera was sitting on my front door. Um, no signature required. It was a little, little nerve-wracking because they didn't send me a tracking number. And I went in and looked at the tracking link that they gave me and it never said that they shipped it back. So, a little, a little concerning there. But anyway, I got it back and it's in good shape. So really quick, let's talk about some of the comments that you guys posted on the first video before I tell you guys what actually happened with this camera. Weather sealing the lens. The lens is not weather sealed. Yes, I shot with the Tokina Farin and uh, it is not weather sealed. Uh, the tolerances on this lens are actually pretty tight and I've used this in light rain before and it, it's held up. Now, in order for a lens to be weather sealed, it has to have a gasket to go between the lens mount and the body. This one does not have one, but a quick simple tip, and this is tried, tested, and true, is find yourself a nice wide rubber band, even something wider than this, and put it over that gap. And uh, that actually works really well. Why do a video about you doing something stupid? Uh, so you guys can learn from my mistakes, obviously, because I did do something stupid. I should have put a bag on this thing. Now, understand the situation before I get into this. I showed you guys what the weather looked like in the first video, but, uh, you know, my awning over my porch is 24 feet long and 14 feet deep, and in the middle of it is a coffee table. And the tripod was on this coffee table, so it should have been covered. I mean, it had four feet before it was underneath or from underneath the awning so you know there's plenty of room there uh, to make sure that it was fine but the rain actually came in from the side and it hit the camera body here and uh, so something happened here and you know while we're talking about this uh, another one of you guys mentioned in this video the the video that imaging resource did about a year ago it was the Nikon D850 paired up against the Sony a7R 3 In this video they ran a sprinkler nozzle on a hose and got both camera bodies soaked. And then when they opened up the a7R 3 the battery was wet. Now they let the camera dry out and uh, turned it on again to make sure everything was good. Then they went out and repeated the same test, uh, this time just misting water. And the misting water shorted their camera out. And I have a feeling that is what happened to mine. So I'm really not exactly sure yet how the water got in there. But it wasn't through the lens mount. The other thing that uh, you guys said was it would expect a $500 bill. A couple of the other comments were you should have put a bag on it. I know. I know I should have put a bag on it. I don't know why I didn't put a bag on it, but I should have. Damn it. Damn it. The angry photographer said, yes, I told you peeps, Sony is junk. I wanted to rant because I'm sick of seeing all these stupid... Why I switched to Sony? Because of a bunch of stupid reasons. Because I'm not too smart. And you know, it's fancy. It's got some cool video features. And I love the IO photo autofocus. And this is why I have a third-party warranty that covers water damage. Yes, I agree. If you are going to buy an A7 III, an A9, an A7R III definitely get that third-party warranty. I know they offer it through Amazon, they offer it through 
uh, Adorama, and I think they offered through B&H. So I should have done that. I didn't. I never buy warranties for anything. But this is the perfect example of why you should. Enough of that. Let's talk about the actual estimate here. So this is everything that happened. And right here you can see charges are zero. Basically what they said was replaced power operation. So the power switch, I guess, maybe got replaced. Uh, complete repair and return of all functions to factory specs, which means they reset the firmware. Um, current firmware is version 1.10, which was it was updated before it left. And then complete cleaning internal and external and optical system. So they cleaned it too, which is nice. What they were saying was the description of parts used. The main flex circuit and CPU lid, I guess, CPU lid, I'm not sure. Uh, no charge. And this was done by a precision camera in the US. I guess this is who does all of Sony's repairs. Uh, I can just tell you that from now on, I'm going to be very careful with this thing. But before I do that, I'm going to show you how to weather seal it. So to fix the weather sealing on the bottom of this, or to at least kind of improve it a little bit, I'm going to try some black silicone sealant. And, uh, you know, this is automotive grade. Uh, this should not void the warranty at all because you're not defacing the camera at all. And we're not going to add much to this. I'm just going to put it on there with a little razor. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this ace card here. Squeeze out a little bit of silicone right there. So now I've got just a blob over here on this, so I can just take off a little bit at a time. And I think that's all I want to do is just put on a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go in here and just seal this edge and just wipe it in there just like that into that edge. And I, you know, when you're standing over it, especially at this angle, I can see if there's any little air bubbles in that gap. And then you can also scrape off the access while you're doing it too. Let's go ahead and do the screw holes too. Might as well since we're here, right? That could be another area that's potentially leaky. And this stuff actually comes off pretty easily. It's not like um, it'll be on there forever and ever and ever. It will be fairly durable. It will be durable, but it's easy enough to clean off. Uh, with just a little bit of solvent on a paper towel so it's not like it's the most permanent mind-blowing damaging thing and because you can put silicone on so thin uh, it will not affect the tripod mount at all and we're going to seal that up too here in a second and the screws you just kind of have to push a big blob into to make sure that they get sealed I don't know if you guys can see it, but I can definitely see it from here. When I push this, and I'm just shoving the silicone into that little ridge and kind of scraping off the access. When I'm doing this, I can tell that I'm getting it completely sealed. I'll squish it into there. And silicone, especially in this form, if you guys aren't total gearheads like me, uh, it's very flexible, like really, really flexible. So uh, you don't want to get big balls on there, otherwise it'll feel a little soft and loose. I put some over that screw. We just take a toothpick here and just rub it around that edge, just to make sure I've got it as good as I can get it. And this won't affect the threads. You know, the very first time you screw in a quarter 20 mount, it'll seem kind of stiff. But silicone, once it dries, will actually rub out fairly easily, so you'll be able to get the rest of that out of the hole. Now, I wouldn't say this is perfectly weather sealed, but I am going to say that uh, if you accidentally set your camera down in standing water, you know, it'll give you more time to realize what you're doing and pick it up before you ruin anything. So that's kind of the main thing. So anyway, I just uh, unscrew and screw in a quarter 20 mount a couple of times just to make sure that it's not built up in there too much. 
and that should do it. So, you know, that should actually uh, take care of any water leaking in through the bottom. All right, I let this dry for a couple of hours, and you can see now it's very dry, nothing's coming up. Now, the thin part of the film that's along the body here will probably rub off over a while. But where I pushed it into the seams, uh, that should actually remain and not go away. But it's always good to keep an eye on it. Now, I put this a big blob in this uh, gap between the door and the body. And so now when I open this, and it's still attached there. So just a little bit of protection right there. So anyway, hopefully this should work. Even though it doesn't solve the original problem of what I had with uh, my grip side over here getting wet, um, at least this will take care of the bottom. So I don't have to worry about accidentally setting this in my on a wet surface and thinking that it might absorb water through the bottom. Hey, there you go. I hope you guys like this video. Subscribe to my channel for more information like this. Make sure you hit that notification bell up in the corner too uh, for when these videos come out. And uh, leave a comment and otherwise, uh, hope you guys keep shooting and you have a good day. We'll talk to you later. See ya.